Okay, so in the last video, I talked about one method of correcting for heteroscedasticity when the form of the heteroscedasticity is known. And I talked about the method of weighted least squares in my previous video. And uh, using weighted least squares, we transform our model and estimate these transformed coefficient values. Luckily, you do not have to transform your model as I showed you here. All you have to do is to tell your statistical program about the weights that you want to use. So let me show you an example in R how to use weighted least squares to estimate a model where we want to explain total financial wealth shown by this dependent variable which is measured in the thousands of dollars in terms of uh, income and the income is also measured in terms of one thousand dollars so this is our first model in the second model we also include age gender and the eligibility to enroll in 401k plan as control variables in this model and because we suspected heteroscedasticity in the model we reported the heteroscedasticity robust standard errors with the OLS. So what we are going to do is we are going to regress both of these models, one model with income alone and then another model with uh, the control variable in it and we're going to regress both of these models using OLS as well as uh, the weighted least squares. So for the ordinary least squares, this is our model. And uh, we can get the corrected robust standard errors using uh, this function that we already talked about. I'm not going to talk about uh, it again. And these are the errors. Those are reported in table 8.1 in your textbook. And then I'm going to regress the model using weighted least squares. Everything is exactly the same. We are using the subset of data with family size equal 1. But here we are assigning weights according to uh, this model. So remember, income was causing heteroscedasticity. At least this is what we believed. That income is the source of heteroscedasticity here. Hence, we are using income as weight. So we assigned weights according to income and regress this model. And then I'm going to save this model. And similarly, I'm going to use... Uh, OLS with the control variables and weighted least squares again the same model but now it has these control variables in the model and again for the OLS we can get the robust standard errors okay so I'm gonna report everything in this table now these standard errors are usual standard errors remember we need to get uh, the robust standard errors that we can get using uh, this command so this command will give you a standard error of 0.1 one zero which will be robust but this standard error is essentially heteroscedastic okay so what does this mean so if we do not control for anything without any control variable and only income in the model what we are saying is that another dollar of income that is if our independent variable changes by one unit another dollar of income is estimated to increase net financial wealth by 82 cents so this is uh, for the OLS but for the weighted least squares the estimated effect is 79 cents that is an additional dollar of income will increase the net total financial wealth by 79 cents so this difference is not that much but looking at the standard error which is more important we'll see that the standard error using the weighted least square is 0.86 but if we get uh, the corrected standard errors here for this uh, model 1, our corrected standard error is 0 0.10 and uh, the standard error of weighted least squares it is about 40% lower than uh, the standard error of OLS. Weighted least square is more efficient here as compared with the ordinary least squares. Similarly, by in after including uh, other variables in the model, again, Weighted least square is uh, showing us an impact of uh, 74 cents and uh, OLS is showing us an impact of uh, 77 cents. So according to these results, weighted least squares is giving us more precise estimates for uh, this income variable as compared with the OLS. So this is how you estimate a model using weighted least squares in R. 
in the next video i'm going to talk about our second method of estimating a model when there is heteroscedasticity of unknown form and we have to estimate it in particular we'll talk about the feasible generalized least squares method all right i'll see you in the next video bye bye